I'm going to go through a couple concept questions relating to solenoids. So here is our first question. What do you think the answer is here? Actually, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see the solenoids. So the correct answer here is C. So B of a solenoid is mu naught times lowercase n times i. Lowercase n is the turn density, which means the number of turns or loops of wire per length. Since our solenoid two has twice the length and twice as many turns, this is the same for both. They have the same amount of current flowing through them, which is indicated very tiny in the picture that I, both of them have the same current I. So both of them, even though they have different diameters, they will have the same strength of magnetic field. Now that's within this boundary of the assumption that the diameter is small enough to cancel the field on the outside. But that's the only situation we're gonna talk about in terms of solenoids this semester. So diameter doesn't matter if we know the number of turns and the length. The diameter of the would only matter if we had a specific length of wire that we were taking that wire and wrapping it around a specific core. The diameter of the core would affect how many times I could loop it, for sure. But that's a different situation. That would be a fixed length of wire that is then wrapped around some sort of core. One more question here. What do you think in this case? The correct answer is B. This is going to come from the right-hand rule. So remember, this right-hand rule, we've been putting our thumb in the direction of the current, which we don't know yet, and our fingers tell us which way the magnetic field circles the wire. And of course, we're using our right hand to do this. So to apply this, let's just imagine this wire on the left. So that wire, the current can only be flowing up or down. So let's think of the magnetic field just if this was our wire on the right. So ignoring the top picture, the solenoid picture for a minute. If I point my thumb up towards the top of the screen, when I do that, my fingertips show me that the magnetic field will go in on this side and come out on this side. It circles this wire. So, Directly behind the wire, so this magnetic field has to circle around. D 
directly behind the wire, the magnetic field would be pointing to the left. The reason I mentioned behind the wire is if I come up to my picture up here, the wire is on the front part of the solenoid, but this magnetic field of the solenoid itself is in the center. So in my little picture down here, behind the wire means in the center. That's why I'm talking behind the wire. So if the current was flowing upwards in this specific segment of wire that I've uh, narrowed down to on the left, the magnetic field of the solenoid would have to point to the left, which is not the case. If we point our thumb down towards the bottom of the screen, Doing that, my fingertips point in on this side and point out on this side. So the circling of the magnetic field behind this wire, the field would point to the right. Which, that's what they've shown in the picture, is a magnetic field pointing to the right. So this matches the picture the given picture in the problem. So it is this situation that must be true. So coming back to my picture, the current in this segment of wire must be flowing down. Well, the only way for current to be flowing down on this left side, it must have come in on the right side, flowing up, flowing through that spiral of wire all the way through, and that would bring it down on the left side. That means the current had to enter on the right side and leave on the left side. So B is the correct answer here. Now, side note. When we have a wire that is circling, we can put our fingertips in the direction of the circling wire, well, the current in the wire. So putting our fingertips in the direction of the current in the wire our thumb would represent the direction of the magnetic field in the center of that circling wire. So here, I could have pointed my thumb of my right hand to the right, because that's what the picture showed me. If I point my thumb to the right, my fingertips point out towards me above my thumb and point in towards me, below my thumb, that also means the current has to be circling such that it comes up on the right and comes down on the left. So this right hand rule where the thumb represents the straight part and the fingertips show something circling is interchangeable between I and the magnetic field B. You can use whatever is circling as your fingertips and whatever is straight as your thumb.